Hi folks, welcome to this video on lactate sampling and the respiratory exchange ratio. So these are two methods that we can use to measure various physiological factors within the body that will allow us to see how fit our athletes are, the progress that they're making and, and what additional support and training they need. So we're just going to deal with one of them at a time. Okay, the picture that we've got on the left hand side over here, okay, is lactate sampling and this one is referring to respiratory exchange ratio. They might both look the same and I dare say they get a lot of the similar things tested, but we're going to deal uh, with each one one at a time. So what's happening in this picture here? Well, as you can see from this picture, this athlete here is running on a treadmill, and this sports scientist here, wearing latex gloves because we don't want contamination, is taking a tiny fingertip blood uh, pinprick sample from the fingertips in order that we can measure the lactic acid levels in the blood of this athlete, so that's what's taking place there. They're just doing a tiny little pinprick, get a small droplet of blood out, and that will be able to tell us the lactic acid levels in the blood of that performer. So why is that beneficial? Well, generally what happens is, as this runner is running, they will increase the speed of the treadmill, or they might increase the gradient, so they're running at a, a greater and greater angle as time goes on, and it allows us to measure when the athlete goes through obla, or their lactate threshold, so, you know, low blood lactate acid levels, Low blood lactic acid levels continue, even though the speed increases, then suddenly there'll be an increase in uh, blood lactic acid levels, and the speed increases again, and there'll be another increase. Well, we'll be able to plot that data and see when the athlete reached oblate, at which running speed, for example. Why do we do this? Well, it allows us to make sure that, first of all, if lactic acid levels are essential in our sport, it means that we're working the athlete at the correct intensity, but crucially, of you could have this test done to you once every six weeks, eight weeks, something like that, and see if we are delaying obla, if we are training our body to push back the point at which lactic acid accumulates by getting fitter, okay, which is obviously a key indicator of our fitness levels. okay. And the final thing about this kind of thing that's going on here, it's objective, it's accurate, it's data, it's fact. That's another key aspect of lactic acid. We can say to someone, do you feel like you're fitter? And they can say, yeah, I feel like I'm a lot fitter. That's subjective, but there's nothing backing it up, okay? Whereas this is objective, it's data, it's absolutely fact that their fitness is either getting better or only staying the same or even getting worse. But it allows us to measure that. So that's fairly straightforward. That's all there really is to say about lactate sampling. So finally, then on, on to a respiratory exchange ratio, which potentially has been measured on both these uh, performers so we'll have a look at that now so what both these pictures got in common well they've both is this thing here not the best lines in the world not the brightest but you can see so what we're doing here is what is respiratory exchange ratio or as you can see further down I've abbreviated it to RER. It's the ratio of carbon dioxide that you're producing in the O2, the oxygen that you are consuming. Not what you're breathing in, because actually you breathe in a lot of oxygen, but you breathe out a lot of oxygen as well. We don't use all the oxygen that we breathe in. It's the amount of oxygen that we consume, okay? The amount that we actually absorb into the bloodstream and use, okay? What can we do? by looking at this ratio of the carbon dioxide that we produce and the oxygen that we consume. I would say that, you know, the gases that have been breathed and breathed out, these tubes go off into what's called Douglas bags and things like that, and we can analyse the gases that are in that bag to work this out. So it's all done properly, it's all done with computers and things like that. It allows us to estimate the amount of fats and carbohydrates we're using during exercise. Remember, fat... The only time we can use fat is when we are working aerobically, okay? So we will be consuming large volumes of oxygen when we are using uh, or when we are burning fat. Carbs, carbohydrates, I can use aerobically and anaerobically, okay? So I'll also be uh, producing various levels of carbon dioxide depending on that fat and on that fuel. So basically, we can use this respiratory exchange ratio the CO2 that we're producing versus the oxygen that we're consuming to estimate whether we are using fats or carbs and the rough percentage of each during a period of exercise. For this lady, while she's riding at a certain intensity on this bike, and for this lady while she is running. So it can tell us if we're working aerobically or anaerobically. If you get a respiratory exchange ratio value close to one, it means you are using carbohydrates, i.e. the oxygen that you are consuming 
is uh, relatively consistent with the CO2 that you are producing. Okay, If the respiratory exchange ratio is closer to 7, so you are taking on board a lot more oxygen than compared to the CO2 that you are producing, it means you are using mainly fats. That makes sense because we can only use fats aerobically. We can only uh, use fats when we've got lots of oxygen into the bloodstream. Why is that useful? Well, it allows us to fuel our ath athletes right for events. So this lady might be recreating a cycling stage for an upcoming triathlon or something like that. So if we take her through the approximate intensities, you know, measure them on this little device here, we can say, right, during that bike ride, you used 60% carbs and 40% fats. We can make sure she eats those rough percentages and proportions of carbs and fats in the day or days leading up to that event so that she's fueled properly for it. So there are two ways that we can measure various uh, physiological factors within the body. Okay, I hope you found this video useful, folks.